am uh, talking about semicolons today. Um, my presentation is called Semicolons Separate Clauses in English. They separate statements in JavaScript, if you see what I did there. It's pretty cool. Um, so here's a bunch of code that I wrote. Um, it's not very good code, but um, to just, just take 30 seconds and look at these and think about which one of these are actually going to give us something useful as a result and which ones are going to give us an error. So the ones that work are going to log uh, foo three times and then log bar once. We want them all to do the same thing. One of them is not going to work. And you might be surprised that it's code snippet number five here. Um, so what's happening is when you have a line that starts with a paren like this, um, the way that JavaScript is going to parse this is it thinks that you want to have a function called console log foo, and you want to invoke that with console log bar as an argument. And so you, you, get, this, you get this type error. Um, so a way we could fix this is we could just throw an empty code block in here. But that's it's kind of a really strange thing to do. We probably just want to use a semicolon, either at the end of the while loop, or we could put it at the beginning of the next line. Um, but I'm sure you're curious why this other code is working. And oops, I think I skipped a slide. Yeah. OK. So in JavaScript, uh, you have ECMAScript, which is basically a spec for how JavaScript should work. And there's certain rules about how uh, JavaScript will automatically insert semicolons into your code. And so the first one of these is going to fix issues like the snippet uh, number three. So it's going to look at that, and it's going to um, look at this first rule that has to do with, with line terminators, which is basically new line and some cup, a couple other things. But it's going to give us you know, this beautiful JavaScript at the, at the bottom that we, that we actually want. And it's also going to fix this code snippet number five. And I'm about 90% sure that this is what's happening, is that when you put in this empty code block, it's going to tell JavaScript that it needs to also have another code block before that. And when you have that other code block, um, it's going to use this, this second thing about the offending token of the closed uh, bracket. And we're going to end up uh, with some, some good JavaScript code that looks like this. So here are some maybe more practical examples of how this rule works. So if you just wrote var a var b on one line, that's not going to work. It's going to give you an error. But if we put these on separate lines, uh, JavaScript will look for that line terminator uh, you know, thing in the code, that element, and it will put in the semicolons so that it can understand what you're trying to write. Um, also, if you add something like this with a, you know, if you have a, a code block or something, it will also put in a semicolon there because JavaScript needs that in order to parse the code into something that it can understand. So this, this second rule, um, I think, is a really complicated way of saying that it's going to insert a semicolon at the end of a file. So if we had two files, or if we had this one file, um, and we ran some code, it's just going to put a semicolon at the end of the file, which is pretty nice. And this is why. So let's say you're working on a project with some other people, and someone wrote this code with function b, and they invoked it at the end of their code. And then you're working in a completely different file, and you have something like this where you're iterate, iterating over an array literal. Um, what's going to happen is if you were, let's say, using Gulp to concat these files together for a front-end application, if those two files happen to be right after the other, they might concatenate into something really bad that you don't want, like this, like true, and then it's trying to um, like look at those indexes of true and then iterate over that. And so you're going you're gonna to get an error. So two ways to avoid this if you're working, let's say, on the front end. Put a semicolon at the end of your code. Or what's even smarter to do is put a semicolon at the beginning of your code in case someone that you're working with doesn't do that. And then your code will still work, which is pretty awesome. 
So the third rule um, has to do with some sort of exceptions to um, the thing with the line terminators. So if we have one of these restricted productions, like uh, return. So if you wrote return and then the next line you have A plus B, JavaScript isn't going to parse that as return A plus B. It's going to insert a semicolon at the end of that line and then do A plus B as a separate production. Um, but if you did something like here where you created a code block manually with the, with the braces, it's going to parse it the right way and it's going to just return A plus B like you would probably want. Um, another thing that happens because of this is if you wrote something like this, A and the next line plus plus, next line B, uh, you're going to get A and then plus plus B on the next, uh, the next line. So it's not really clear why you'd want to do that. And with a lot of these things, it's not really clear why you'd want to do that. But it's good to know, because there are some instances when these, these are actually, like, you can actually do like, useful and important things if you really understand how the semicolons work. So this, this last rule is kind of like another thing that adds some more complication and exceptions to the other rules. So if you wrote a for, for loop, and for some reason you put it on other lines like this, JavaScript is not going to insert additional semicolons into that for loop. Because if it did, it would break the code. So there's an exception that says, if you're in a for loop like that, it's not going to insert any other semicolons than the ones that you already have, which is pretty useful. Um, now this other thing is probably the coolest thing in this presentation. Um, what do you think is going to happen if we ran this code at the bottom with the for loop? Um, what we're trying to do is replace every value in this array with the zero. So if you guessed syntax error, you're right. <laughs> because, uh, because of this rule, JavaScript will never insert a semicolon automatically that results in an empty statement. And a for loop, there has to be some type of statement after the for loop in order for it to work. Um, and actually, the way I wrote this technically with the console log, it's actually going to like, use that console log in the for loop. But let's say I didn't have that there, and we were just running that for loop with nothing after it, then it's not going to work. But if we put a semicolon after that, it's actually going to run it the way that we would want. And I don't know, this is a pretty cool hack if you're, if you're into writing for loops. Um, so at the end of the day, it's like, do you want to put in semicolons on your own, or do you want to rely on the automatic semicolon insertion that JavaScript has? So a couple considerations. Performance, basically not going to make a difference, because JavaScript is only going to do the semi semicolon insertion like one time when, it, when it's like reading the file. And then every time you run the code after that, it's already going to have the semicolons there. So it's really not going to make a difference. Um, something like if you're doing any kind of minifying or compression, um, these are all using tools that are like not exactly the same as the JavaScript spec necessarily. So they might do things that you don't expect um, if you don't use semicolons correctly. Or they might do things you don't expect if you do use them correctly. You don't necessarily know um, with these type of uh, you know, other kind of software. Um, file size, again, basically going to be the same. The new line character and the semicolon are both like one character. So your file size is going to be exactly the same. Um, same, th same thing with like JSLint and other tools. Um, those things are going to apply some rules that might be helpful to your code and potentially are not going to be. Um, but probably the takeaway, the number one takeaway here should be when you're working with other people, you should have a consistent style across your code. Because you can write a lot of things in JavaScript that the JavaScript engine will be able to process, and you will be able to get maybe something that you want. But other people might not be able to read them. And that, that's kind of a big deal, especially if you're working on a team, especially if you're trying to you know, build something that's useful, like Angular, and you want to have source code for that. It's nice if all the code kind of has the same style, and people can, can look at that and read it. A um, couple more takeaways. Uh, Semicolons, you can use them or not use them. 
It's up to you. Um, JavaScript is different than something like HTML, where if you have broken HTML, um, different browsers might have different ways of trying to fix that. But every JavaScript engine should apply these automatic semicolon assertions in the exact same way. So this is part of the spec. It's not a bug that you can not use semicolons and your code will work. Um, a couple edge cases that are probably useful are um, if you begin a line with any of these characters, um, you probably want to put a semicolon, a defensive semicolon, in front of that line so that you don't get any weird effects that you don't want. And also, if you're actually using an empty expression in a useful way, like with that for loop, you should probably comment that so people like have some idea what your code is doing. Otherwise, it might be really confusing. Um, and again, you know, JavaScript is a computer program. It can read a lot of things that humans cannot read. So make your code good. And uh, yeah, here's like a whole bunch of resources where other people have also talked about these type of uh, semicolons, things you can do with them, weird bugs that you can create accidentally. Um, that's my presentation. Thanks. So, yeah.